Hi, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and um, Living the Wholesome Life. And we are on week 11, day three of our positive, peaceful growth journey. And um, so the affirmation, we are following Dr. Susan Lawton's positive, peaceful growth calendar that you can buy on at Aroma Tools or My Oil Life. If you've been following us, you know that we have an affirmation for the week and an affirmation for the day. And the affirmation for the week is I am reigniting my creativity. And so all this week we are exploring different ways to um, become more creative and ignite our creativity. And um, the affirmation for this day, for today, is I am happy when creating new projects. So. Um, as I was thinking about that and I was chatting with my husband about that, I'm like, okay, Derek, give me your thoughts on being happy creating new projects. And he's like, Suzanne, like you are super happy creating new projects because you're always the one who thinks of them and I'm always the one that is doing it. And I'm like, I know, like it works so great. So I don't know what type of relationships you have. And it's not like that for everything. Like sometimes I do my own project and and he does his own projects, right? But a lot of times I am the idea person in my house. Um, and Derek is the, the instigator and the fo the um, follower thrower and uh, making sure that they get done. So um, anyway, I hope that you all have someone in your life that can that can help you went, run with the, your projects. Um, whoever, whether they're a spouse or a child or a friend or a coworker whatever you are trying, or even if they're a mentor that you're telling your project to and you're like, hey, check up on me on this project, you know, in two weeks. Let's see what, see what I've gotten done. But I hope you have someone that can run with you. And if you have someone that you can just like, oh, created a project here, passing that off to you and they're happy to run with it, like more power, your to, more power to you. Like, wouldn't it be great if we all had people that we could just create projects that we want done and hand them over and they run with it. So um, that's the first thing about being happy in the project. The other thing that I was thinking about in being happy in projects is um, when to not take on too many projects at the same time or or like maybe keep a um, a journal where or a notebook whatever where you're writing down all the different projects that you want to do like a to-do list but kind of like a project list I love I really really love um, Wonderlist the app Wonderlist on my phone for that when you come up with a new project you just put it on Wonderlist and you can you can um, kind of delve deep and deeper and put in like specifics on your projects um you can open like folder in in like you could open up a project and you have lots of different folders with lots of different things that you can put in each of the folders anyway so i really like wonderless for keeping track but sometimes it's really nice just to open up a book and say hey here are my projects where am i on so maybe you want to keep a physical like Think about who you are. Do you connect more with online stuff? So when you get an idea, you can instantly have it with you at all times to put into your phone. Are you more of a physical perk? Hey, let's sit down with the book. Let's see where I'm going on my project. So my first thing when you when it comes to being happy with projects is to definitely have a way of, of recording your amazing ideas that you get, the amazing ideas that you want to do, um, to bring into reality. And, and then, you know, checking in with that list on a periodically on a regular basis, like maybe the first of each week, the first of each month, what, however you want to check in on those projects. But um, you can even put that in your calendar. I know um, my next door neighbor, um, she she used to do written lists, and now she just puts everything into her Google Calendar and um, on her phone. And if whatever she doesn't get done one day, she just flips to the next day or she flips, you know, forward. So, I mean, you can definitely even use your calendar to keep track of projects. Um, just however you want to keep track of them, but don't let those amazing ideas that you want to do go. And then the next thing, when it, after you've gotten them all written down, all the things, wonderful things that you want to do, I would say I would use the Stephen Covey technique and I would give you two of his techniques. But one is um, prioritizing them. Right? Which projects are the most important to me that I really, really want to make sure in my lifetime that I get done? And then um, 
So he always says definitely prioritize them. And then he also says, and then schedule your priorities. If you don't put them in your calendar, if you don't put them, you know, on your phone, whatever, you're not going to take time to do them. Life just will get in the way. So, and then the thing that I wanted to talk about um, on that is, so if you have your child enrolled in gymnastics or piano lessons or, you know, football, whatever your children are into, um, you as a parent are so faithful. I, I, I know you. Like, you enroll your child in something, you are so faithful at getting them there every single week. Let's be that type of friend to the projects that we want to get done. If you're trying to read a book, you know, schedule it, you know, one hour a week at least, I'm going to be working on my book. Or maybe it's half an hour in the morning, or maybe it's an hour in the morning, whatever. Just schedule the time and be your be your own parent on that. Be your own best friend and say, you know what? This is a boundary. This is something I have to do. I'm sorry. Like if someone said, okay, can you do something for me when it was time to take your daughter to um, piano lessons or gymnastics, whatever, you would say, I'm sorry. I would love to be able to do that. But this, this is, I can't because I have this prior commitment. Like make commitments to yourself and keep them, keep them with the same strength that you keep your children's connections. Okay, so that's the first thing that I wanted to say and um, on being happy creating new projects. And then as you're creating new projects, like I want you to think about you and think about how do you like to create? What? How do you like to work? Do you like to work with music on? And if so, what's your favorite type of music? And if so, when that happens, when you're, when you're baking or when you're cleaning or when you're... Um, I don't know, gen doing genealogy and family history work, whatever is the project that you are, you know, painting your walls, put on something that makes that project a happier experience for you, whether it's putting on movies. Um, I love to clean to movies or, or educational talks um, or whatever it is that you're trying to create. And I say cleaning is creating because cleaning is creating a more beautiful, uh, more beautiful environment. I was going to say beautifuler, but that's not quite right. It, but it creates a more beautiful environment. So even if something that you are creating is fleeting, right? It's still creating. You created a smile in someone. You made someone laugh. You created that. And even though it's fleeting and you don't really have anything to show at the end of the day, you know, for your creation, it's still creating. So um, anyway, as you're creating things, definitely do whatever um, you need to do to make that creation experience a happier experience for you, whether that's putting music on, putting essential oils on, um, bringing a friend along with you to help you create in the journey um, can also make things super fun. Okay, so um, I think that's all that I wanted to say on creating projects. I know that you guys are all, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and we are all just, our minds are set on how can we make this the beautiful, most beautiful holiday for us and for our loved ones. And so as you're creating, I guess the last thing that I, as we're all creating, I guess the last thing that I want to bring in is that let's bring God into, as a partner into our creation. You know, let's take some time to, um, to pray and to meditate and to connect with God and to say, God, what do you want me to create today? What's the most important thing to you? So let's bring God into that. And that really segues really quick into our second section that we're doing. So, you know, the first section is we kind of talk about the affirmation for the day and the week. The second section that we do um, is we talk about um, the diffuser blend that we're diffusing and a little bit more about that. So this week we are diffusing two drops of patchouli, which is the oil of physicality, um, two drops of sandalwood, which is the oil of sacred devotion, and two drops of clary sage, which is the oil of clarity and vision. And so we went, we talked in depth yesterday on the emotional benefits of patchouli, like super amazing benefits that can really help with body shame. But today we are gonna be, and a lot of other things, um, 
I just know that sometimes going into the holidays, a lot of people will have body shame. So patchouli and, and um, grapefruit essential oils can really, really help with that. Um, okay, but today, staying on topic, we are talking about sandalwood. And there's two types of sandalwood that doTERRA sells. One is a Hawaiian sandalwood, which is a little bit sweeter, and one is an Indian sandalwood. So the Hawaiian sandal sandalwood definitely has a, a more top note, and a, the Indian sandalwood definitely has a more bottom note. And um, anyway, so the, the Indian sandalwood is a little bit more grounding. The Hawaiian sandalwood is a little bit more uplifting. Both sandalwoods are super good to use when you have just had a hard day. Like just had a hard day, just some stress going on. Both sandalwoods would be perfect to take a quarter cup of Epsom salts, put five drops of the Indian sandalwood or the Hawaiian sandalwood into the Epsom salts, put that into a warm bath. The Epsom salts help it diffuse into the water um, better and it also helps it feel like so much better onto your skin and um, it's just going to be a very peaceful relaxing um, stress stress melting away soak so that's the first thing that you can use sandalwood for and, and that's for when you have anxiety or for when you have stress sandalwood is going to calm you down it's going to it's going to ground you okay so sandalwood, of course, is a tree oil. The one thing that you need to know about tree oils is all of them are incredibly grounding and super good for stress or anxiety. So your frankincense, your cypress, your um, obviously sandalwood, um, eucalyptus, all of those are grounding oils. Okay. Um, okay. Going into some of the other benefits of sandalwood. So it can really help with our self-esteem. And it's a, it's kind of a, so so many different oils bring us into balance, right? Um, if you have high or low, they bring you into balance. Like if you have high blood sugar or low blood sugar, cinnamon brings you into balance. If you have high, um, high blood pressure or low blood pressure, low blood pressure, that shouldn't be that hard to say. Um, it helps to bring your into a balanced, healthy blood pressure. And so sandalwood is gonna do that for our, our egos. So if you have a low self-esteem and you really have problems feeling good about yourself, um, this oil could be amazing for that. And, and sometimes as we're reaching the end of the year, we haven't done all the projects that we want to get done, um, it can our self esteem can take a hit sometimes as we're meeting with lots of different friends and different families if we are of the type where we are comparing ourselves to others and it's super hard not to compare yourselves to others like and we always compare our worst with everyone else's best right and so and we always compare what we know about ourselves to, to what everyone else like lets show about themselves too so um if anyway if you have a hard if you have problems with self-esteem, sandalwood can be something that you can put on, that you can diffuse, um, that can help with raising your self-esteem and, and reminding you about how awesome you are. Um, sandalwood has been used for millennia when it comes to in perfumes and in incenses. So definitely it's an essential oil that you can, you can mix up and put on your skin. Um, also, on the other side, remember how we talked about how oils are balancing. So if you have low self-esteem, sandalwood can help. On the other side, if you tend to be arrogant and you tend to um, be egotistic and to, to mm, kind of think that you're a little bit better than other people are or um, be a little bit more judgmental toward others too, that seems to, that those qualities seem to go along with having the same, um, that, can, that can help balance us out and realize that we're all good. Um, sandalwood also another one of the things that sandalwood can do is it can help us remind our remind it can help remind us that even when even though people are different, we're still all good. Like I I might like lemonade and you might like limeade or or I might like lemonade and you like might like chocolate milkshakes, right? 
and and it's all good i might like one type of music and you might like another type of music and our likes and our achievements don't mean that i am worth more than you or less than you our worth isn't our worth isn't um assigned to us or given to us on our what our tastes are or what we've achieved that that doesn't uh, affect our worth we are all children of god god loves us all the same and that's where we get our worth we get our worth because we're a child of god okay um the other thing that i really wanted to mention is that is that the sandalwood can be because it's so relaxing it can be very helpful if you if you um, have a hard time sleeping um, it can putting it into a diffuser um, putting it using it as part of your linen spray it can be super super nice for that okay so the emotional mm -hmm. properties that um, sandalwood can help with is um, okay so really quick I need to mention that also for through generations and with many different religions sandalwood is something that they bring into their religious ceremonies and many people think that it helps them to connect them to God more um, do your own research on that decide what you think about that but sandalwood is an oil that if you're feeling din disconnected from God or from your spiritual self like if you tend to put your spiritual um, thoughts away while you are going throughout your day um, working on more things for more earthly matters, right? Sandalwood can help with that. Um, if you're feeling empty, if you're, if you're overthinking things, and if you're being materialistic, sandalwood can help with that. And um, oppositely, sam sandalwood can help us be more humble. So you can kind of talking about the arrogant thing. It could help with, with our sacred devotion or our meditation. It could help bring in some spiritual clarity. Um, it can help create a stillness. It can help us um, surrender to um, what we what we really know is best. Like sometimes, sometimes we fight against um, what we know is best. Um, some people are little rebels and they, they tend to have that in their personality. So if you have that in your personality, sandalwood can, can, can help diffusing sandalwood or putting sandalwood on may help you remember that, that sometimes rules are for often, often rules are for our best benefits and often putting the spiritual matters first is actually in our best benefits. Um, anyway, it can help us become connected to our higher consciousness and, and a really higher thinking that we have. Okay, so that is sandalwood. Be quick, really quick before I, um, before I end, I want to talk about the, the songs because we always pair what we're doing with this song and that the, the songs that I'm praying this week with being, reigniting our creativity and being happy at creating new projects is A Whole New World from Disney's Aladdin. And I really, really love the new Disney's Aladdin so much more than the old Aladdin. Um, I love what a strong um, person they make Jasmine in the in the new Aladdin. And um, okay, so I'm connecting with that, and then I'm also connecting with that song from Sound of Music. I have confidence, which is. Um, just remind us that we can do the things that we that we want to do so um whatever your projects yeah. are i help you help you list them out so you don't forget them i help you prioritize them i hope you have joy in bringing your projects into reality today take some time to to be still take some time to be quiet take some time to connect with god Take some time to remind yourself how amazing you are. Okay, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters, Living the Wholesome Life. Is today, what's the date today? Is it Wednesday? Yes. Okay, so today is Wednesday. Sometimes I get my dates confused. So tomorrow is Thanksgiving. So I'm just going to let you know 
that I am not going to be hopping on on Thanksgiving. So instead of doing it on Thursday and Friday this week, we are going to be doing it on Friday and Saturday this week. So um, just skipping the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, but I want you to know that you are amazing and you can create absolutely beautiful, loving, kind, memorable holidays. You have it in you and so do I. Okay, so go and be awesome. This is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, Living the Wholesome Life.